Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's my honor to be here, too. Um, my name is Jali. I'm the head of R&D at Google Cloud AI. I've also been a researcher throughout my career. These roles have allowed me to participate in every step that AI needs to go from vision to reality. I've been fortunate enough to participate in algorithm research, building data sets, and shipping products in reality. AI is an incredibly interesting and exciting technology. And today, I'm here to share some of the avenues that it could uh, change life for millions of people. To start with, I'd like to talk about two very traditional industries, education and healthcare. As we know, healthcare is a very complex field with a lot of challenges. AI could have the potential to change the outcome from individual patients to the entire hospitals. Healthcare typically starts with a patient's lifestyle. AI could help to provide accurate guidance to their lifestyle diet, etc., based on their past disease history, genetics, and prescri prescriptions, etc., etc. It can also provide automated monitoring and early assessment of critical conditions, associating subtle precursors of uh, signals that could correlate to emerging critical conditions that a human will not be able to detect. When a hospital visit is necessary, AI can play additional roles to help provide deep insights during and before and after the patient and the doctor's one-one session. It could also help to ease the workflow for doctors by automatically transcribing the session and uh, filling out paperwork. AI could even provide deeper assisting diagnos diagnosis so that uh, our doctors could be able to provide sophisticated diagnosis. Once the diagnosis uh, recommendation is made, Artificial intelligence can also help to provide uh, further treatment strategies, including change of lifestyle, prescription, sur surgery, etc., or all of them above. When a long-term stay is necessary, whether a surgical patient or a senior patient in senior care, intelligent system can provide uh, further help to reduce the burden of nurses and doctors making rounds. It can help to predict abnormal signals, such as falling and uh, agitated movement, etc. In addition, machine learning can also help the entire hospital to run much more efficiently. Patient triage will take multiple patients medical record and help to ensure care is carefully designed and distributed. In some cases, medical conversation agents will help the patients to understand their symptoms without leaving their house in the first place. Here, I'd like to talk more uh, about some of the new research that I have participated in. Specifically, the thoracic uh, disease identification and the localization research. As some of you probably know, diagnosis uh, skill is a very delicate uh, skill. Some of the even very tiny mistake could cause very se uh, severe consequences. In fact, 10% of patient deaths is related to diagnosis errors. And uh, according to Professor 
Kurt Langlas at uh, Stanford, 4% of all radiological interpretations contain clinically significant errors. This number is especially significant if we consider that over 400 million such medical interpretations are carried out each year in the United States alone. So let's look at uh, the chest X-ray um, disease identification problem even further. Chest X-ray remains a significant radiology challenge. Radi radiologists have to invest significant uh, effort to understand and go through every single radiology image in order to make diagnosis recommendation. If we can have some AI-assisted tool for them to get more insights about the radiology image, for example, we could predict the abnormal area of some potential disease in the radiological image. That will help them to ease the process and make the entire process much more efficient. However, we are facing a chicken and egg problem here. First, we know our radiologists are facing a lot of challenges and efforts in order to get through all the medical images in order to give their interpretations. We want to invent an AI-assisted tool in order to make that entire process much more efficient. But in order to do so, we need to get additional data and ask radiologists to label a lot of data to train our method to build the models. This goes back to the exact problem that we want to help the radiologists to ease. So in order to solve this problem, we try to uh, turn to the open source NIH chest x-ray dataset. This is a fairly large data set with over 100,000 radiology images. Each of the image is associated with about up to 14 label, disease labels, mined automatically from the report, which is relatively easier to get. And as you can see here, less than 1,000 of the, of the images has bounding boxes associated to them, which would, each of them would require a board certified radiologist to label the bounding box. And that will require a lot of effort. So typically, this kind of data set is not well suited for traditional supervised learning, which require a lot of detailed labeling data. So towards this problem, we come up with a novel approach by combining the holistic global information about the disease, as well as the local detailed annotation. And we're able to predict both the disease type for the, based on the global information, as well as the local, local predicted area and highlight where the abnormal areas, disease types, could be. And the overall disease prediction and suspicious region highlights works much better than state-of-the-art machine learning approach. We are just at the beginning of this uh, direction, and we are not alone. There are many partners and customers who are leveraging Google Cloud. For example, Zebra Medical are using Google Cloud to analyze new scans and deliver insights to hospitals to inform clinic decisions at scale. But there are still much more remains to be explored and innovated in this space. Hopefully in the future, our sp specialists can spend less time on repetitive and error-prone tasks 
by working together with AI-assisted tools. Another area that AI could help is education. As we know, education is another very traditional field that is facing a lot of challenges. It needs to balance the need of students and teachers with the complexity of schools and resources. AI could unlock a lot of unique potential solutions here. To start with, AI could uh, help to ensure our students have a very safe environment to study uh, and uh, prevent them from dangerous actions such as uh, falling, fighting, or any other dangerous activities. So that our educators can focus on teaching and uh, artificial intelligence systems can help taking care of the rest. So more potential would uh, exist in the education experience itself. Artificial intelligence algorithms could help to customize courses that is personalized to each of the student based on their past experience, strength, weakness, and uh, personal preferences, etc. It can also turn abstract examples to be very vivid real-world applications and examples. And uh, it could help our teachers to scale up the effort by doing automated uh, homework and exams assessments. So this kind of experience can repeat um, through the course, over the course of a semester, a year, and even the entire education experience, so that uh, we can provide highly personalized experience to each of the indi individual students. And best of all, such technologies can be both applied to STEM as well as the arts. For example, we can easily uh, extend some of the technology to a student's dance and violin performance. So I've talked about uh, how AI could uh, help po potentially change healthcare and education in the future. What about the countless other businesses beyond healthcare and education? The real power of AI can be felt once its power can be leveraged by every possible Businesses. But that's a very challenging problem. As we know, the machine learning development is a very complex and resource consuming process. It will require investment and expertise in every single step of the machine learning development. Collect the data, design model, turn model into uh, two model parameters and evaluate, deploy it, and finally update and iterate the entire process. It will be challenging to, for most of the businesses because of, of the over 20, 21 million developers, only one million of them have data science background and even fewer like thousands have deep learning background. How do we solve this problem? We, make, we made some attempt towards the solution of this by introducing the AutoML technology. All we need to bring to AutoML is the data that we want to label and predict. And uh, AutoML will handle everything from there. It gives the opportunity for any business or organization who wants to create customized models with very limited machine learning expertise. Earlier this year, we've introduced uh, the AutoML Vision product. 
basically, the idea is the customers can upload and uh, bring their labeled uh, images. And uh, AutoML uh, technology will generate a customized visual recognition model based on the data that they want to predict. Here is an example. Let's see how we, do, we could do weather prediction, weather image classification. Here, there are ten, over 10 different kinds of clouds. Each of them indicates a different weather pattern. If we use the generically trained uh, visual models, here is what we are going to get. Will be easy to predict uh, there is sky and cloud, but we won't be able to know what kind of weather or what kind of cloud there is. Now, if we try to upload all these uh, domain-specific training images to AutoML Vision, here is what we can get. AutoML Vision can learn what specific cloud or weather it means and give the prediction here. For example, Cirrus, Cirrus here. And uh, AutoML is a product that based on multiple advanced technologies, including learning to learn, neural architecture search, transfer learning, hyperparameter tuning, and more. Now let's take a look at how, uh, about how our customers are using AutoML. Um, Zoological Society of London is a very good example. It is a non-profit organization that uses camera trap to track the pop wildlife popula population over the world. But that will generate millions of unlabeled images for them to manually label each of the image as one of the wild animal type. So, Zoological Society of London has been closely collaborating with our team to shape the AutoML product. And now, they are able to automatically label different wild animal types by using AutoML. And we are very excited uh, the potential of AI could bring to the, pot uh, the way we protect uh, an wild animals. Another example is uh, Disney. Disney is an early adopter of machine learning and uh, the cloud platform. That changed the way they interact with their customers. And uh, they extend their ability of uh, uh, visual recognition to recognize product images by using AutoML. Now they are able to automatically detect characters and brand animal uh, elements, such as logo and uh, color schemes. And uh, by leveraging this ability, they are now able to provide more relevant uh, search results and product uh, recommendations. Another example is uh, tactile graphics. For those uh, who are not familiar with uh, tactile graphics, it is a special type of images designed for blind to understand content. It is very challenging to design such graphics because it needs to be drawn without perspective, it needs to be very simple and clear so that the blind readers can understand the content without being distracted by other unnecessary details. Because of the challenge of designing it, it's very different uh, countries all over the world. They are collecting the, these tactile graphics into repositories for reuse purpose. However, these repositories 
they're not connected. So a group of researchers try to use AutoML to differentiate what is a good uh, tactile graphics, what is not. And then they can search online and find good tactile graphics candidates. Now, content publishers for the blind can, are able to find good tactile can candidates for their readers to understand. So AutoML is part of the, the effort towards the trend of uh, democratizing AI. The real meaning of it is not just about how powerful technology is. It is about also about how accessible it is. AutoML vision is just one of the features that uh, we've democratized. And we've seen so powerful examples from Disney, from Zoological and of London, from the tactile graphics search engine, its impact. We've seen that uh, in Disney that we are able to enhance the retail experience of one of the world's largest retailers. And uh, we've been able to empower wildlife conservation in a scale that uh, uh, we've never been possible to do in the past. And we've also helped to improve interaction with the blind. AutoML vision is just the beginning. We are going to also extend this to more features, such as speech, natural language processing, and uh, translation, and more, to bring more of these uh, features to other fields. AutoML vision, as a single feature, can already do so much. We are very excited to see what the next wave can unlock. Technologies like AutoML point to an exciting future in which AI is available in the, to everyone in a format that is easy to use, regardless of what kind of problems they want to solve. But solving a concrete problem isn't enough yet. It's important it's equally important to understand what kind of problems we need to solve and uh, to understand what people need in business, in academia, in healthcare, entertainment, and countless other fields that are driving our society today. AI is an incredibly exciting direction and uh, the most exciting about it it's its potential to make life better for all of us. I hope that uh, every one of us can contribute to this effort to make AI even more impactful. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Jo. Um, so we have uh, uh, plenty of time for questions. So please, uh, you know the drill. Raise your hand if you have a question, and um, the mic will come through. Here, yeah. Thank you. Hi, um, I had a question uh, regarding, so as the models are abstracted and even combined, and, and this becomes more accessible, um, what tools do you have for introspection on why and how a prediction was made? Uh, so for example, say a retailer wants to identify potential shoplifters. Very good question. So. Basically, in order to understand what kind of um, like, uh, technology we can offer to different uh, users, we are also trying to understand what kind of problems they want to solve. Right? So in the case of a retailer wants to <laughs> identify shoplifter, they will help us to define what is a, a shoplifter, and uh, we can help them to to come up with this, uh, the 
technology to help that. Hi, my name is Samantha, and I work at USA as a software engineer. My question to you is, I mean, it's really obvious, everyone in this room, that you know, the need for machine learning and, and artificial intelligence in our community is prominent. But what are you doing, or how do you build a product that recognizes the complexity around these type of techniques? And, and you're, you know, you're going for education and um, scalability with these projects, uh, our products, so that everyone can utilize this technique. But what are you doing to mitigate the risk of the misuse of these techniques and the misuse of these products, right? Because, I mean, I, we've heard it today from Latanya and I think from Daniela, like, there's a huge risk in using this, these techniques and the need for basic statistics, et cetera, is, is, is obviously prominent. So what are you doing to kind of mitigate that when you're building products for widespread use? That's a very good question. I think as uh, technologies and researchers, this is a very important uh, uh, question for us to explore how to, and make sure how um, AI technology can be used only for good purpose. In fact, uh, at Google, we have an internal team who are uh, especially focusing on this kind of problem how to understand uh, bias, how to understand and how to make sure there is no misuse of technology. I have to say, we are, all of us are at the early stage. This is uh, some serious topic that uh, we should all uh, contribute and uh, explore down the road. Hi, uh, great talk by the way, thank you. So, um, AI in education and the arts for our children actually scares me, especially when you're talking about courses, tasks, and even learning music tailored, customized for each child's preferences and maybe even their biology. As humans, we get to challenge each other to think outside the box, to dream, to learn what we thought we could learn, to become wiser. What is Google's vision and promise around AI in education? Thank you. Um, wow, that's a very big question. Um, so here I'm listing out some of the potential AI, re AI research that we could, uh, we could make education um, software more powerful to assist our teachers. Um, the goal is to hope uh, that with more intelligent system uh, and intelligent algorithms, our teachers can focus on creative and uh, less repetitive work and uh, hope to maximize everybody's interest, every student's interest and uh, capability during this uh, education experience. Oh, just a second, we have a mic there. Yeah, it's just that. Hi, I had a question uh, about some data you showed early on in the slide where you're looking at chest X-ray images and you need labeled data. Um, I have a naive question, but I've always wondered if you can just look across time to eventually when a patient did show symptoms of some disease you were trying to diagnose and then go back and say, yes, this patient did have this disease and use that as the label. Do you know if that's possible or if that's too ambitious? That's definitely possible and it's a very good question. We have been working closely with uh, radiologists to understand what's their real need. Because uh, in the field, people are focusing on giving a radiology image and trying to come up with a disease label. And uh, after we talk to many specialists, they are telling us this is not what we want because we have so much other information uh, that we can get, either from the patient disease uh, history or from other signals from different reports, etc. And uh, it's more helpful to give us uh, the indicator or some proposal on a normal area. That's uh, eventually how we come up with the idea to give assisted recommendation and trying to give uh, some of the uh, recommendation about um, abnormal area in our research. Um, hopefully, by leveraging 
the useful information come up uh, from the AI assisted tool, the specialists com combine with many other information, re uh, information source they have to come up with the best solution or decision in the radiology uh, analysis. So I'm a student in business analytics currently, and since you're an expert in artificial intelligence and machine learning, I was wondering what your experience has been in um, artificial intelligence potentially creating a feedback loop. So um, in the example of a potential shoplifter, for example, if we're identifying what a shoplifter is, that can create a feedback loop about um, shoplifters and in future state that could change. So are these models dynamic? Um, what are some of the challenges that you've experienced with uh, feedback loops in um, the different types of artificial intelligence, intelligence studies that you've done? Exactly. I think uh, it's totally possible to keep, uh, create the feedback loop. And the uh, feedback loop would make, it, uh, make any AI system to be more powerful and effective. Uh, some of the simple example, as you, some of you probably know, the recommendation system. So based on how many, how many clicks you've, uh, uh, links that uh, you've clicked, um, proposed uh, by the previous uh, artificial AI system, um, we can learn a better AI algorithm based on that. And uh, that's one simple uh, example in a more mature um, uh, direction. Uh, but uh, there are many other uh, fields that we are still exper experimenting and uh, trying to learn uh, how much we can improve. Hi. Um, one last question. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. The lucky yeah. one. Um, <laughs> so when you, when you, you talked about um, AI-assisted diagnostic in the healthcare industry, um, there are other players in this industry, particular IBM Watson, who's had a lot of coverage in that space. Um, as a leader in the AI space, in the machine learning, NLP space, can you, you know, tell us the different approach that Google has taken versus the other vendors? What's the niche area that you play compared to the rest of the players in, the, in this industry? Huh. Mm, a very good question. I have less access to other uh, uh, companies' uh, solution, but uh, at Google, uh, we really focus on collaborating closely with uh, uh, our customers, for example, hospitals and uh, specialists, trying to understand what's the real need and try to bridge the gap between uh, the technology and uh, the real solution. Um, and uh, you mentioned that there are many players in this field. I want to say in healthcare, that's the field. We want as many players as possible. We want everybody to contribute to this space to help all of our life to be better. That is a very nice and political answer. <laughs> 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 Thanks very much again, Jia for talking to us today. Yeah.